Welcome to lecture number 17 of advanced geotechnical engineering course module 2 lecture 6 under permeability and seepage. So in the previous lecture we try to understand how to construct flow nets if we are having anisotropic conditions that means the different permeabilities in horizontal and vertical direction and when we have layered soils like uh, having stratified deposits in such situations when permeability of uh, two soils when when it is less what will happen when the water is entering from a soil having low permeability to high permeability or high permeability to low permeability how the flow nets can be constructed we have discussed and we also have discussed about how to construct uh, uh, flow nets for unconfined uh, seepage conditions that is nothing but embankment dams or ethan dams uh, and then also uh, different construction methods for the uh, the phreatic surface which is the uh, the line of seepage or is also called as line of saturation of uh, saturation line uppermost line or topmost flow line which is called as phreatic line. Namely we have discussed about uh, uh, Dupuit method and Schaffernach method and Casagrande's uh, method we have discussed. In this lecture we will be discussing about uh, uh, some uh, problems uh, based on whatever we have discussed with the numerical as well as some physical simulation uh, which we have carried out at IIT Bombay. In continuation of that we will try to discuss how to evaluate uh, this uh, performance with and without uh, filters particularly uh, when we have to what are the general criteria which is required for filter design uh, we will try to cover briefly thereafter we will try to calculate how to calculate the factor of safety against uh, piping failure uh, by both the methods Azra method and Tarzaghi's method for the two cases one is uh, uh, when you have a sheet pile wall that is uh, 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 when you have a confined seepage conditions and when you have a concrete dam with a cutoff how to calculate. So this uh, particular uh, lecture uh, is titled permeability and seepage number 6. So in the previous uh, lecture we actually have discussed how to construct a uh, topmost uh, phreatic uh, surface this is nothing but the BC is nothing but the phreatic surface. So there are a number of uh, you know methods which are actually given and uh, some ex uh, entry and exit conditions are also given and which we are not discussing but they are required to be referred from the relevant test books. But if you look into this uh, uh, flow net construction for an earth dam here AE which is the dam resting on impervious uh, stratum AE happens to be a flow line. AB is an equipotential line and DE is equipotential line with a head H2. So the head drop or potential uh, drop is nothing but H1 minus H2 and BC is the flow line what we are actually discussing is the top flow line and 1, 2, 3 or you can say the 2.5 uh, these are the flow channels such a, uh, they should be constructed such a way that we have the aspect ratio B by L is equal to 1 and C D which is uh, neither a flow line nor an equipotential line this is a component of the flow normal to the C D and water flows freely down the surface of the slope. So C D are the point of conflict we can actually say that point uh, C uh, uh, point D where which is uh, you know uh, appear to be a point of conflict in the given example which is here. So these are the uh, potential drops because this being uh, here uh, the uh, it is easy to calculate it is generally the uh, between, e, e, between each equipotential line 
so this is the equipotential line 2 3 4 5 6 so what actually happens is that uh, when as the pressure on the uh, topmost uh, flow line is 0 so the total head is equal to pressure head plus elevation head when the pressure uh, is 0 at because of the atmospheric uh, it is open to atmospheric condition uh, then the, the total head is equal to elevation head so depending upon the whatever the location is there we can divide this into uh, divide this into say number of drops that is h1 minus h2 by what whatever may be the number of drops we can simply say that delta h delta h and delta h equal potential drops can be divided as the water uh, uh, flows from this point to this point there is a uh, you know dissipation of uh, head which actually takes place uh, this is uh, an embankment dam with a perimbul filter these perimbul filters are actually contained uh, they are based they are placed basically uh, uh, in the horizontal direction or they are placed uh, uh, at the toe in the form of a rock toe or they can be placed within the uh, uh, dam within the earthen dam as uh, a chimney so it is also called as a chimney drain. So in this example the embankment dam with uh, perimbul filter construction is shown here wherein uh, as suggested by Casagrande the basic parabola is assumed to be start at 0.3 delta the delta is nothing but a point from this point this distance from this distance and beta is equal to 180 degrees and because with the beta is equal to 180 degrees the delta L by L plus delta L is equal to 0 and here this is what actually I was telling about the delta H delta H and delta H these are the drops and so here this is the equipotential line with the 0 head this is the equipotential line with the 0 head and uh, here this is the uh, the topmost uh, flow line and this is being uh, equipotential line you can see that this has to be orthogonal so it actually meets this at a right angle. So here also this being uh, uh, the horizontal this being the uh, flow line so the equipotential line actually meets here at the right angle uh, right angles. So this is a uh, you know how the flow net construction will happen or the flow happens in real conditions when uh, we have where we have a perimbul filter. So in this particular slide the seepage through homogeneous sand beneath the base of concrete dams is shown here. Uh, suppose if you are having a, a concrete dam which is uh, having this configuration and there is some apron layer which is placed here and this is called as the cutoff layer basically this cutoff layer is used to uh, divert the flow away from the uh, uh, in the down uh, in the tail water level to increase the factor of safety against piping and other conditions and uh, here uh, this uh, cutoff can be in the downstream direction or cutoff can be in the upstream direction also so in this in this case uh, example where uh, the cutoff is in the uh, cutoff wall is provided in the uh, at the downstream end and here in this case uh, cutoff is provided in the upstream end here this is a case where uh, there is no cutoff is provided uh, but you can see that how the flow hap uh, happens and here uh, for this construction the impervious uh, blanket has been placed here and then the flow which actually cannot take place through this so uh, which is diverted away from the uh, the face of the uh, concrete dam so which actually we have the extended uh, flow net which is like this so here we have a granular filter and uh, there is apron which is actually placed here in all the cases uh, you know where we are the apron uh, which is actually shown so for this case also uh, when you have a perimbal uh, sand layer or perimbal soil layer beneath the concrete dam and how the uh, flow flow net actually happens so uh, the depending upon the you know the configuration and head of the water and high flood level requirements and all one need to have the parameters and perform the seepage analysis and based on the uh, the results like uplift pressure and then uh, once we have the other uh, issues other uh, factors like uh, factor of safety against uh, piping and then exit gradient once we calculate which we are actually going to discuss in this lecture 
then it is possible for us to uh, decide about an appropriate configuration for a, a particular uh, uh, site specific problem. In this particular slide a seepage through homogeneous dam consisting of very fine clean sand is shown here. So here there is a, uh, a granular filter is shown so the granular filter which is actually placed here makes it uh, uh, you know the flow net will be like this. But this is a flow net which is actually shown for a dry weather condition. Suppose when we have a condition of a continued rainstorm then the there is a possibility that the flow nets construction will actually change and leading to instability of a dam because of the seepage failure. So here because of the continued rainstorm there can be a possibility that this type of uh, you know the complete uh, saturation can take place and uh, the flow net can change uh, the way it is actually shown schematically here and that can lead to the uh, or endanger the stability of a uh, the earthen dam or homogeneous dam under question. So in order to maintain or in order to contain the periodic surface uh, within the uh, you know the earthen dam body or conditions with unconfined seepage condition. One of the alternatives used to design appropriate filter materials when seepage water flows from a soil with relatively fine grace into a coarser material there is a danger that fine soil particles may wash away into the coarse material. So when seepage water flows from a soil relatively uh, soil which is actually having relatively fine grains into a coarser material there is a danger that the fine soil particles will get washed away into the coarser material and then you know the what will happen is that the coarser material uh, uh, which is actually having high permeability will get uh, blocked. The similar situation happens when fouling of uh, uh, you know railway ballast when it occurs uh, they have they lose the uh, you know uh, permeability uh, or drainage property whatever they have. And also you know load sharing uh, uh, behavior also can get affected in case of uh, track underlay structures. So such situation can be prevented by the use of a filter or a protective filter between the two such soils that means that when you have a soil to be protected and when you have a soil which is uh, very high permeable. So in order to prevent that uh, situation of washing of fine soil particles into coarser particles there should be a filter layer. Then what should be the criteria for selecting this criteria filter layers nowadays uh, with the advent of uh, uh, materials in uh, uh, civil engineering uh, some of the materials like uh, uh, geosynthetics uh, uh, preferably a non oven geotextiles uh, which are actually having uh, adequate or appropriate opening sizes uh, are recommended because uh, they are ease with construction and also the timelines can be very very significantly less but moreover the performance is also superior because of the the tailor made product whatever we install but however some of the issues like clogging during the lifetime of its operation and so then this use of this synthetic materials also can lead to some sort of replacement of uh, natural materials because the, the availability of the uh, natural materials is scarce now and so in such situations one of the viable options is to uh, you know try out for uh, uh, modern materials like uh, non oven geotextiles or geo composites for this application. So in this particular slide uh, a typical flow net for an earthen dam with uh, rock toe filter is shown. So rock toe filter is nothing but this is the soil to be protected and this is the rock toe and uh, here this is the filter material. So this filter material what uh, it does is that it prevents a fine soil particles to get washed out into the uh, coarser uh, portions and then we, if we are able to protect this then what will happen is that it uh, uh, ensures uh, the stability to the uh, structure uh, and then uh, the conditions of uh, uh, the uh, dam stability can be ensured. So without filter at the toe the seepage water would wash the fine soil grains into the toe and undermine the structure. So it basically undermines the stability of a structure. 
So this is an example uh, what I was mentioning about a chimney drain uh, where you have got a horizontal drain and then it is extended with uh, a column of uh, sand and sometimes uh, uh, in uh, when we use uh, some pervious materials uh, here there is a layer which is called as hardening is also used. So next to that hardening layer, so hardening layer is nothing but a core which is having a very high uh, very low permeability and uh, which is uh, having high uh, compressibility characteristics as well as high plasticity characteristics. So that uh, that remains within the center along the center line of the bond and then uh, the uh, you know the sand drain layer in, in sand drain layer in, in, in the in place of uh, uh, you know the in for chimney drain can be constructed. But here also uh, like you know attempts uh, can be made to replace this uh, uh, you know these layers because the constructing uh, this layer is uh, difficult generally if this has to be constructed. Uh, we have to construct in this layer uh, once this layer is placed and then compacted like this and then you have a uh, this layer once it is compacted and then this material need to be placed and then compacted. So the construction actually goes like this in the field. So this is a, a typical flow net for an earthen dam with the chimney drain. So here also what I mean to say is that uh, one can think of uh, replacing uh, uh, the conventional uh, uh, sand layer which can be used in the uh, which is uh, being used in the uh, general construction now with uh, a geosynthetic material like nano and geodes style but however the research has to address the long term performance of such systems. So before that let us look into the uh, what are the conventional uh, criteria which are actually available uh, for the proper selection of the filter material. Uh, the similar uh, uh, criteria also have to be are there are available uh, uh, for the uh, non oven geotextile textile uh, when we wanted to replace uh, the conventional uh, filter material that is nothing but the sand. So for the proper selection of the filter material that is uh, the sand the or a suitable soil the size of the voids in the filter material should be small enough to hold large particles of the protected materials in place. So that means that D uh, the criteria which is actually given is that D15 uh, uh, of the filter uh, ratio of D15 of the filter to D85 of the soil should be less than or equal to 4 to 5. So D15 filter is nothing but diameter through which 15% of the filter material will pass. D85 soil is nothing but diameter through which 85% of soil to be protected will pass. So uh, this is criteria 1 and the criteria 2 is that the filter material should have a high permeability to prevent build up of large seepage pressures and hydrostatic pressure at the in the filters. So here in the filter material if uh, the material is used is fine then there is a possibility that uh, you know the build up of high hydrostatic pressures can happen. So for that D15 of filter uh, to D15 of soil should be greater than or equal to 4 to 5. So D15 of the soil is nothing but diameter through which 15% of soil to be protected will pass. So once we have let us say uh, the gradation or particle size distribution of soil to be protected, particle size distribution of filter then based on uh, of say particle size distribution of uh, uh, you know filter then you know we can actually see based on this criteria. Uh, the ideal band for the uh, uh, ideal band for the band of uh, range of uh, particle size distribution which can be used for uh, as a filter material. So in this uh, particular slide uh, a typical earthen dam uh, sections without any drainage is shown. So here uh, yeah, this is a uh, physical simulation which is done uh, through centrifuge based physical modeling technique at IIT Bombay. So the model which is what we are seeing is the front elevation of the model when it is subjected to uh, flooding in the upstream side. So as can be seen as the uh, water on the upstream side increases and uh, with the presence of without any drainage or let us say that we have a drain which is clogged then uh, the possibility of uh, it is uh, uh, 
uh, failure or under and uh, you know the stability of a section can be seen where it got affected the moment uh, uh, the periodic surface uh, reaches to the toe of the dam which is actually shown. So this type of uh, physical simulations will allow us to understand uh, the performance of uh, uh, these particular conditions uh, in full scale level and uh, also allows us to uh, try out a new phenomenon or new materials. Uh, which in wherein we can actually uh, see the response of these uh, models with the different uh, materials and then can lead to uh, use in the field or formulation of the guidelines for the uh, construction of uh, dams or uh, the hydraulic structures in the field. So this is uh, the physical simulation once again I am actually seeing here showing you here that this is uh, nothing but the food dye. Uh, what you can see is that uh, as the water comes uh, these are these are the telltales for telling us that this is the uppermost periodic surface which actually has developed and then uh, you know the failure has actually occurred here and then endangered the stability of a uh, dam section which is shown here. So let us see the numerical simulation of uh, Ethan dam the similar section without any drainage and with uh, clogged drain. So this uh, simulation was cal cal uh, carried out by using uh, um, Geo Studio 2012 version and uh, wherein uh, the CW model uh, 2012 was used and this is basically a finite element based uh, uh, program which allows us to uh, simulate or mimic the behavior whatever uh, as close as possible to the uh, field conditions or the physical simulation conditions which are actually shown. So let us see the, uh, the video simulation of that. So here what we see is that as the head of water uh, uh, progresses you can see that the way it happened uh, in the physical simulation the progress of uh, the periodic surface the flow or into the these are the flow vectors which are actually taking place can be seen and the periodic surface development can be seen. So this uh, shows us that uh, you know how you know the simulations can actually uh, help us to understanding the uh, you know the um, you know the flow net behavior and uh, the assessing the stability of these structures. Now we will try to see uh, you know in this particular slide uh, this particular condition which actually has same condition by using the same program but the here what we have done is that this uh, allowed us to do the seepage analysis for about uh, uh, 30 days then you know this is the condition which is actually uh, it develops here and then it undergoes failure here. So this is a condition. Uh, where we actually have got uh, a, again a physical simulation but in this case you can see here there is a permeable sand layer is placed that is that horizontal drain or horizontal filter is placed and uh, the same height but uh, uh, which is 6 meters but now you can see uh, as the uh, head of water increases on the upstream side on the this is the improvised layer this is the improvised layer which is actually constructed with the clay layer and this is with a silty sand layer and this is with the very fine sand placed at 85 percent relative density but as you can notice here that as the, uh, uh, the water uh, progresses that this being the horizontal drain layer you can see that the water or the phreatic surface meets this at uh, 90 degrees uh, closely you can see here this is uh, how it is. So this indicates that uh, you know how uh, you know appropriate uh, physical uh, simulations uh, can tell us about the uh, the real response of a these hydraulic structures. So this is a particular uh, again uh, similar case with uh, transient seepage analysis during uh, uh, with a drain for 30 days. So you can see that the as the days progresses how the uh, you know the periodic surface is maintained you can see that here also from the numerical analysis by using the CW we could get the similar results. So we will see again the simulation of uh, 
uh, you know this uh, by using the CBW program but this is with a 0.6 meter uh, uh, 0.6 meter drainage so you can see that now this drainage layer is indicated here and uh, this is the drainage layer so as we observed in uh, as we observed in uh, uh, the physical simulation it actually meets the uh, you know similar way and the, the the flow is contained within the dam itself the flow is contained within the dam itself you can see here so this is the periodic surface which actually develop otherwise previously we are seeing that the periodic surface is actually going with here. So this indicates that the importance of having an appropriate filters within the dam sections. Now let us look into some problems based on whatever we had discussed in the previous lecture. So this is a problem with for a single row of sheet pile wall structure we need to draw the flow net diagram. And, uh, and given that uh, the soil is isotropic in the case 1 or case A is soil is isotropic which is having a permeability of uh, uh, 10 into minus 3 uh, meter per second and uh, in the second case that is case B is that soil is anisotropic uh, where the ratio of the permeability is Kx is, is uh, 6 times Kz. So first case is the isotropic so let us use uh, the same uh, CW. Uh, program of Geo Studio 2012 and uh, we will try to do it for isotropic case. In the isotropic case uh, once we get the construction so this is uh, the FEM mesh for the sheet pile wall section. So wherein uh, we have here uh, 15 meters of the uh, upstream head and then where we have the here the 5 meters so the differential uh, head here is about 10 meters and this is the perimbal soil, uh, soil layer and the extent of this horizontal distance here is 20 meters and here is 20 meters which is taken and here also 20 meters in this problem. So this is a typical hydraulic structure constructed with a sheet pile wall and these are actually sometimes this is can be a part of a coffer dam suppose if you wanted to construct a bridge pier foundations within the river or in any case any, any situation where you need to actually ensure the stability of these uh, coffer dams are constructed in the form with the sheet pile walls against the you know instability problems. So this is a case A the isotropic section uh, here you can say that the, the these are the uh, you know the flow channels and flow net which is actually given by the CW uh, program and uh, this is the uh, flow channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then if you take it this as 5.5 the number of flow channels which are actually involved is 5.5 and this is the you know the flow line. So you can see that the equipotential lines are this being the flow line equipotential lines are actually commencing here and then dropping down at 90 degrees here. So the orthogonality between the flow lines and uh, equipotential lines can be seen. And these curvilinear squares which is actually having approximately the aspect ratio 1 can also be seen. So the program which actually gives this once we get this data then we this particular package also this particular program also has got the capability give the drainage or by using this we can actually calculate by number of flow channels and number of potential drops we can actually calculate by knowing the k we can calculate the the seepage or permeability of the uh, the discharge through the uh, particular uh, permeable sand layer wherein uh, the sheet pile wall section is embedded. Uh, now the case B is that uh, we are having a case which is uh, uh, anisotropic section and here uh, the program actually has atom automatically taken uh, this condition and uh, here uh, you can see that because of the anisotropic in nature the even after having a transformed section the flow flow lines and equipotential lines are not orthogonal to each other. So now construct another problem so we in the previous case we have seen a sheet pile wall problem now let us see a flow net for the dam section resting on two layered soil deposit with the K1 is equal to 5 into 10 to the power of minus 2 uh, mm per second and K2 is equal to 1 into 10 to the power of minus 2 mm per second. So hence you know we can see that uh, when we have got uh, you, you homogeneous soil deposit 
as well as uh, uh, when you have got uh, uh, say uh, you know two layers what will happen to the flow nets and how these things can be used for constructing uh, or calculating the discharges. So here we have uh, uh, you know uh, two layers of soils one is K1 having permeability 5 into 10 to the power of minus 2 meter per second and another one is K2 having permeability 1 into 10 to the power of minus 2 meter per second. So K1 is 5 times more permeable than K2 and uh, this is uh, a concrete dam which is actually having a head of uh, 10 meters and uh, the horizontal length is about 15 meters this is the upstream water level and this is the tail water level and uh, in the field the seldom the situations are like this we have got layered soil deposits. So this is uh, this particular layer is indicated with this yellow color and the other one is indicated with a light green color. So when uh, we construct the uh, flow net by using CPW program so this is the uh, you know equipotential line here and what we can see is that this is the permeability and this is the uh, permeability this is the upper layer having permeability uh, 5 times the higher permeability than this one. So based on the conditions where what we discussed uh, for uh, uh, having uh, uh, non homogeneous soil deposits since here K1 by K2 is 5 the length to width ratio of flow elements in layer 2 uh, with respect to layer 1 is uh, 1 by 5 why because we have said that when you have got two layers then K1 by K2 ratio is equal to B2 by L2 by B1 by L1 by having uh, uh, you know B1 B1 is nothing but this particular uh, width between uh, uh, two flow lines that is B1 and uh, along the uh, you know length of the uh, equipotential line that is L1. So here you can see that uh, the rectangular uh, the, the squares are uh, almost uh, we have the flow, flow net is actually having uh, uh, curvilinear squares. So it indicates that with B1 by L1 is equal to 1 and K1 by K2 is equal to say 5 then B2 by L2 uh, or breadth to the length of the, uh, the along the flow li equipotential lines equal to uh, or L2 by B2 is equal to 1 by 5. So when you have uh, say a permeable layer on the top and uh, impermeable layer on the bottom then we actually have the get the uh, flow net or the equipotential lines uh, with uh, having uh, large uh, rectangles. So that means that here the B2 by B2 by L2 uh, is equal to 5. So the breadth will be you know let us say that if breadth is 1 unit the length will be 5 units because the permeability is 5 times. So if uh, you are actually having say impermeable layer uh, 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 below and uh, uh, impermeable layer above and permeable layer below then the situation is that again there is a possibility that here we get the uh, you know the small uh, rectangles and because of the virtue of the uh, change in the permeabilities of the layers. So here what we have seen is that when you have got non homogeneous soils uh, the situation how uh, the uh, flow nets can actually change and uh, this actually we have discussed here. So uh, this uh, example has uh, given us uh, uh, you know clear idea how we can actually uh, you know construct the flow net for uh, uh, having soil which is actually K1 by K2 is equal to 5 that is upper layer is actually having higher permeability than the bottom layer. And uh, now you know what the same problem the drop in the pressure head along the length of the dam due to seepage losses uh, can be seen here. So the B is the breadth of the dam and you can see that how the as the water uh, uh, flows from the upstream end to the downstream end how the you know head of water is dropping uh, along those equipotential lines which are actually shown. Now the, the next example problem is that the construct the flow nets for the dam sections which are actually uh, this is the earthen dam sections where in the first case uh, the soil is uh, isotropic the permeability is uh, of the order of 5 into 10 to the power of minus 5 meter per second for the dam section and uh, second uh, case is that the dam is joined such a way that now here K2 is uh, 5 times the K1. So K1 is the permeability of the soil 1 and K2 is the permeability of the soil 2. 
So, uh, in this particular example with case A, where homogeneous dam having constructed with a soil having fine to temperature of minus 5 meter per second, the FEM mesh which is actually fed to the CWW program is uh, uh, given here, and where the uh, the hep, uh, upstream head of uh, 10 meters can be seen here, and uh, this is the uh, you know equipotential line, and is given as the impervious uh, phase. So the flow net which is actually constructed for uh, solution for the problem with homogeneous uh, section KCA is shown here, wherein uh, you can see that this is the, the line of uh, seepage the topmost flow line and uh, this is the next flow line and then this is the next flow line. So here we have 1 and 2 and 2.5 it is number of flow channels are 2.5 and number of potential drops are 10. So the program actually gives like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 these are the 0 these are the uh, you know potential drops. So uh, we can see that uh, by knowing this uh, we can actually calculate the discharge or leakage through the dam section where K into H by ND into NF. Now the same problem but now in this example the dam is constructed with uh, two different materials in the, the layer which is on the left hand side is actually having permeability K, in, K is nothing but K1 is nothing but 10 into 1 into 10 to the power of minus 2 meter mm per second and here it is a 5 into 10 to the power of minus 2 mm per second. So the permeability of this is uh, this layer is 5 times more than the soil 1 which is actually indicated with a green color here. So flow net for the CPS through a zoned at dam this we have actually discussed for the uh, you know as a general example but now with reference to a 10 dam the soil uh, for the upper upstream uh, half of the dam has a permeability K1 and the soil for the downstream half of the dam has a permeability say K2. So in this example we, uh, we have uh, given the it is given that K2 is equal to 5 times K1. So by using K1 by K2 is equal to B2 by L2 by B1 by L1 we can see that now with K1 less than K2 when you have a layer soil 1 with less permeability than the soil 2 then we have square elements with L1 is equal to B1 here and this is the alpha 1 and this is the boundary between the two soils soil having K1 and K2 then you can see that how the flow net changes and with uh, a small rectangles here because the virtue of the change of the permeability. So for K1 by K2 is equal to uh, K1 by K2 is equal to 5 B2 by L2 uh, is equal to 1 by 5. So the breadth to length ratios is actually now becomes 1 by 5 times. So whatever we actually get B1 by L1 um, uh, let us say that if you are having 1 and 1 then here it actually reduces to that uh, uh, in the uh, directions which is actually B2 by L2 reduced by 1 by 5 times. This we will see how the uh, you know which we can interpret from the, uh, the flow net which is can be obtained by uh, from the CW program. So here if you are having a, a case with K1 having a, a permeability uh, and K2 uh, having soil having permeability K2 and K1 less than K2. Then you can see here the flow net as we discussed in the previous slide uh, it undergoes a change and uh, it, uh, it, it gets uh, uh, deflected here. So the similar uh, thing can be seen in the uh, program also. So here the number of uh, full flow channels in soil 1 or K1 with K having permeability or nothing but 1 plus 1 and this is approximated as 2 by 3. So 2 plus 2 by 3 that is 2.67 or the number of full flow channels in soil 1. Similarly here with B2 by L2 is equal to 1 by 5 because of the virtue of K2 is equal to 5 K1. So what will happen is that this 1 will be reduced by 1 by 5 and this is also reduced by 1 by 5 and this 2 by 3 into 1 by 5 it becomes 2 by 15. So the summation of this 1 by 5 plus 1 by 5 plus 2 by 15 the number of full flow channels in soil 2 with K2 are 8 by 8 by 15. So the potential drops will remain same and uh, though we are actually having two soil layers so we can say that the Q 
is equal to k1 into h by nd into nf1 is equal to k2 uh, into h by nd into nf2. So by knowing nf1 that is the number of full flow channels in soil 1 with k1. So here in this case 2.67 divided by number of potential drops which are actually here like a homogeneous section here also we have got 10 potential drops. The only difference is that the uh, you know uh, because of the different soil layers you can see that the changes in the uh, flow lines the here you can see this uh, curvilinear squares and here the rectangles are actually small because of the virtue of the permeability which is actually different. For example if you are having a different material say uh, uh, permeability of uh, uh, this layer is low and this layer is high then you can see that here you will be have a large rectangles. So after having seen uh, the examples now, now let us try to see if you are having a, a sheet pile wall structure uh, or a concrete dam structure and when there is uh, uh, you know a water flow which actually takes place uh, uh, we have seen that the water flows vertically down and then you know it actually raises upwards. So uh, we always have to ensure for designing uh, these uh, uh, structures uh, in the water bodies uh, we have to see that uh, the stability of the structures against uh, uh, piping or some other failures. So here this particular situation uh, which is uh, a case for the a sheet pile wall is a confined uh, seepage problem uh, uh, where failure due to piping for a single row of uh, sheet pile wall with structure which is after Terzaghi 1922. So here uh, uh, a sheet pile wall structure having uh, H1 as the upstream head and uh, H2 as the downstream head is shown here and uh, based on the uh, model tests which were carried out and then it says that a zone which is within uh, D by 2 from the D is the depth of uh, penetration of a sheet pile wall into the permeable layer. So the this particular zone is actually prone for failure. So in order to uh, calculate the stability which is nothing but uh, here the W dash is nothing but the weight of this prism which is nothing but if you take half gamma dash into D square into 1 meter per meter length of a a sheet pile wall uh, structure when you consider, consider this is a plane strain structure then you know you can actually take it as uh, uh, the weight of the prism as half gamma dash gamma dash is nothing but the submerged unit weight because of the, the presence of uh, water. So half gamma dash uh, d square will uh, give me this uh, particular uh, uh, you know uh, weight of this prism. So what it is actually has been done is that suppose if there is the uplift which is actually created. So here in order to calculate this uh, uh, uplift uh, pressure uh, here we need to actually use uh, uh, the total head why because uh, here uh, in this case uh, we, uh, we because he, he, it is the head which is actually dissipating from uh, you know as you uh, water flows from this direction to this direction. So here we actually have downward direction and here there is an upward direction of the water flow. So this particular uh, this zone is actually critical for failure and uh, can lead to failure. So here this uh, uh, calculation has to be done with uh, uh, by knowing the total head here by knowing the total head here let us say that can be obtained suppose if you are having a one equipotential line here and one equipotential line here one equipotential line here you get H1, H2, H3 the average of those heads will actually give the average head. For example here HA and HB is taken as HM is equal to HA plus HB by 2. So by the uplift pressure on the area which is D by 2 which is nothing but half gamma W into D into HM which is actually calculated as of this uplift pressure. Now we take the equilibrium of this. So if this uplift pressure is high there is a possibility that this gets lifted up and this is actually has been found through model test that it actually uh, instigates failure by creating a uh, you know the permeable to the soil increases very drastically and uh, you know the gap between uh, shear pile wall and the soil will arise and then lead to the pipe piping failure this particular failure is actually called as piping failure. So here the average hydraulic head is considered and that is based on the total head which is actually obtained from the uh, you know flow net uh, diagram. So the factor of safety against uh, piping failure or heaving can be calculated is nothing but factor of safety is given by W dash by U and for critical uh, case 
for factor of safety is equal to 1 we have to uh, we get w dash is equal to u then we can actually calculate what should be the adequate depth of penetration of sheet pale wall in the permeable soil layer also. But here half gamma dash d square divided by half gamma w d into h m will give me d gamma dash h m gamma w. So this is uh, uh, you, know, you know d by h m into gamma dash by gamma w. So this is uh, uh, also uh, said as a factor of safety is equal to the gamma dash by gamma w is nothing but uh, IC that is the critical gradient uh, which we have discussed that IC is equal to critical hydraulic gradient is nothing but gamma dash by gamma w into GS minus 1 by 1 plus E and IM, IM is nothing but uh, HM by D, HM is nothing but the average total head uh, beneath that prism and uh, D is that depth of penetration. So which gives me the factor of safety again is the heave as IC by IM, so by knowing the uh, you know critical gradient, critical hydraulic gradient and uh, uh, this particular uh, um, IM which is nothing but uh, HM by D will give me the factor of safety this should be a, uh, should be of the order of 4 to 5 to ensure stability of the structure. Suppose if you are having a structure which is uh, having uh, low factor of safety one of the uh, you know alternatives or options is that uh, to provide an apron layer in the downstream side and that actually increases the, uh, the uh, you know resistance. Uh, in the form of say W dash plus uh, the weight due to apron say W then W plus W dash by U the factor of safety increases uh, with the presence of a apron layer uh, in front of the uh, a, a sheet pile wall structure. So to find HM find the total head within the D by 2 zone horizontally so this is the procedure for uh, finding the uh, IM is given here which is nothing but HM by D uh, which is indicated here. So uh, as I said uh, that we uh, for another case with according to Hazra uh, uh, according to Har uh, uh, he has given for structures other than single row of sheet pile walls uh, which is uh, having a concrete dam and with a cut off here. So for this case based on the model test it has been uh, observed that the D is the depth of penetration so the D by dash is uh, you know uh, which is uh, uh, indicated here uh, and d by 2 at a distance the failure wedge is actually formed here but the validation of these uh, you know particular criteria uh, uh, is still uh, limited. Now here what we actually say that uh, for safety of uh, hydraulic uh, uh, structures against uh, piping uh, failure according to Harza 1935 factor of safety is defined as critical hydraulic gradient by I exit gradient, I exit gradient can be obtained by uh, you know which is nothing but delta H by L, the delta H is nothing but the last uh, you know uh, you know equipment between the you know penultimate equipotential line uh, in the downstream side of the hydraulic structure uh, or that length of that flow line in that zone can be given as I exit. And we can also estimate uh, according to Har 1962 uh, the I exit gradient as 1 by pi into H by D and then H is nothing but the maximum hydraulic head and D is the depth of penetration of sheet pile wall. So one can uh, determine from the flow net or one can actually also uh, calculate from according to Har 1962 but I exit uh, once we know and once we know the critical uh, hydraulic gradient this is another way of also estimating the uh, uh, the factor of safety against piping. So here uh, uh, for the safety of hydraulic structures against uh, uh, piping suppose if you are having sometimes initially a configuration is such that you do not have any cutoffs suppose if it is found unstable against uh, uh, piping then uh, there is a need for uh, uh, you know uh, inclusion of uh, cutoffs. So let us look into the example problem a stiff clay layer underlies a 12 meter thick uh, silty sand deposit and here a sheet pile wall is driven into the sand to a depth of uh, uh, 7 meters and uh, K of silty sand is 18 to 24 of minus 6 meter per second. The stiff clay layer uh, can be assumed to be impervious and void ratio of the silty sand is given as 0.72 and the specific gravity of the solids is given as 2.65. So what we need to do is that uh, to draw the flow net and estimate the discharge and uh, we need to ca calculate what is the pore water pressure at the tip of the sheet pile wall 
and factor of safety against piping failure and see whether the, the structure is stable against the piping or not. So we have the configuration like this you got uh, upstream water level and downstream water level and uh, a silty sand which is actually shown this is the depth of penetration of a sheet pile wall and this is uh, 7 meters and uh, the stiff clay which is uh, uh, the impervious layer in this case and uh, you have got a silty sand here and this, this distance from the tip of this to this one is say 5 meters and this is the downstream water level where you have got 2 meters and this is uh, 3 meters is the uh, so this head drop is head, head loss is 3 meters. So this construction of the flow net uh, works out like this so 8 potential drops and this is the potential equipotential line and this is the last equipotential line 8, 7, 6, uh, 5 uh, these equipotential lines are number are given and uh, this is nothing but 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 the numbering is wrong in the slide and uh, here this is the tip of the sheet pile wall and this is the flow channel 1, flow channel 2 and flow channel 3 or you can be approximated as 2.6 or something like that. Then we can actually calculate uh, uh, number of flow channels and number of potential drops and head loss is uh, 3 meters we can calculate the discharge. We need actually pore water pressure at the tip of the sheet pile wall and the datum is considered here. So this elevation of this once by knowing the elevation of this we can actually calculate total head is 1.5 meters why because this is 8, uh, 7, 6, 5, 4. So 4 by 8 into uh, head loss is 3 meters so the total head available at the equipotential line right below the sheet pile wall is 1.5 meters. So this estimated from the flow net elevation head is minus 9 meters below the datum so pressure head is 10.5 meters the pore water pressure is about 105 kilo Pascals at that level. Similarly now the coming to the next example uh, the uh, subset of the problem is that head loss for equipotential drop uh, that is delta H is equal to uh, 3 by 8. So maximum exit hydraulic gradient is nothing but 0 0.37 by 2.6 which is uh, given as 0 0.144 and uh, uh, then we can actually calculate critical hydraulic gradient uh, with the GS minus 1 by 1 plus E 0 0.96. So by putting point critical hydraulic gradient to the uh, I exit gradient we can actually calculate this actually as 6.7 so greater than 5. So this arrangement is found to be quite safe against uh, uh, with respect to the piping failure. So in the in this particular uh, lecture what we actually have discussed is that uh, uh, you know how we can actually construct uh, flow, uh, flow nets through a, uh, a numerical simulation and, uh, and uh, we also have seen uh, the uh, centrifuge based physical simulation of uh, this particular cases with and without uh, uh, gradients uh, with and with and without uh, filter layers and how important uh, is the presence of uh, horizontal drain uh, horizontal filter is also discussed. And then we actually have uh, tried to see the factor of safety against uh, failure uh, piping failure for uh, a sheet pile wall structure and the criteria which is actually required uh, the similar uh, direction the criteria which is actually uh, the D dash which is actually given for a concrete dam is in between D dash by D and D uh, and then that is uh, uh, given by uh, uh, used for uh, concrete dams. Uh, which are actually having a cutoff in the downstream level.